Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. I was asked about several topics during the most recent um, live stream that I had, and one of the topics was about gray line. What is it? How does it work? How can it help me? Why is it there? And is it spelled G-R-E-Y or G-R-A-Y? All important topics. So now let's let's draw in um, some of the basics here. The sun. The sun is huge, okay? So the, the rays strike the earth relatively parallel. We'll draw the earth, okay? Like this, it's round, obviously. And because of the way the sunlight hits the earth, we have what is called a day-night terminator. So the earth is coming up this way, it's rotating over here, and this is day, and this is night. Now, there's a band in here where it's twilight, and this band is called the gray line. if you live in the United States. If you live in Great Britain, it's called the gray line. G-R-E-Y is the British spelling, G-R-A-Y is the American spelling. Okay, now that we've got that important thing out of the way, let's look at some things. First of all, how big is the Earth? The Earth is 25,000 miles or 40,000 kilometers around the equator. Now, that gives you a radius in here of about, let's see, I figured it out just a little bit a while ago, um, 12,700 kilometers or about 8,000 miles. Or that gives the, the um, circumference. This is about 4,000 miles for thousand miles. Okay, so now how thick is the atmosphere? Well, the um, edge of space is considered by most people generally because there's, it, it, the atmosphere doesn't stop suddenly. It just gets thinner, 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 thinner. The uh, atmosphere is about uh, 30 miles uh, thick. The edge of space is generally considered 100 kilometers or about 60 miles. Okay, so how big a line would I put on this for the atmosphere compared to, you know, scale on this thing? It'd be about this thick, like that, okay? And that would include the ionosphere, uh, everything like that. Some of the low Earth orbit satellites are only, say, 150 miles up. The space station's about 250 uh, miles up. Compare that to 4,000 of the density here. You see that they're very close to the Earth. The atmosphere is very close to the Earth. But it's really hard to draw the layers of the ionosphere in such a, a to scale. Okay, so we're going to greatly exaggerate. Okay, during the day, and remember, it's actually only in this little tiny streak here. Now, uh, very important to remember, the ionosphere is part of the atmosphere. It's the very upper reaches of the atmosphere. The 100 uh, kilometer edge of space designation is arbitrary. There's nothing special that happens at that point. The ionosphere can go up to like 350 miles or so. The ionosphere is extremely thin. You would think you are in outer space, which for example, the space shuttle, not space shuttle, we don't have space shuttle anymore, the International Space Station, and there's now the new Chinese space station, are um, orbiting inside the ionosphere, 
Okay, that's how thin the atmosphere is. Now as you get down a little bit lower, down closer to the Earth, you have a layer of the ionosphere called the D layer. If you were in the D layer, physically in the D layer, first of all, you would have to be in a spacesuit because it is essentially space out there. But there is enough sensible atmosphere right there that the, ion, uh, the uh, UV radiation, ultraviolet radiation, um, will charge that so much, because there's so much atmosphere out there, will charge it so much that it will be um, very heavily charged and it will uh, tend to absorb radio waves of lower frequencies or just let radio waves of higher frequencies uh, above about 7, 8 megahertz just go on through. Now there's two F layers up here. I'll draw them up here, F1, F2. Okay, that are up higher. Now there's not very much sensible atmosphere up there. So sensible means you can sense it. Um, there are sensors that can measure pressure like that, which is very near zero pressure. Um, these get ionized, okay, but there are fewer of them. So instead of absorbing the radiation, they refract it, okay? They refract it. Now what happens at night? Now remember that the atmosphere gets dragged along with the Earth. So as the Earth rotates, the atmosphere rotates. So this is happening all the time, every day. It's not like there's an F layer up here that's just sitting there while the Earth rotates underneath it. No, this rotates with it. So you're getting this constant everyday diurnal change between your D and F layers and your just your F layer um, all the time. All the time it's happening that way. Now, let me point out that there's a layer in here that's E layer it's in here. Uh, the phenomenon having to do with this comes and goes, and so therefore it's called sporadic. We won't worry about that right now. Now, the question is, is you are on this Earth. This Earth is moving, okay? And there is always this day-night terminator. So if you live here, you're going to rotate across the day-night terminator. This way in the morning, this way in the evening, okay? And during the period of time that you are rotating through it, remember you're right here, you're very close to the, the edge of it. All of this ionospheric stuff where the F layer forms from the F2 and the F1 and the D layer disappears and so on and so forth is happening right above you at dawn and at dusk. It's happening right above you. There's these big changes taking place. Now, what good does that do the average ham? Well, I'll tell you what good it does. Uh, sometimes you can get some outright ducting uh, going on in the D layer. So if you're here in North America, okay, this would be the South Pacific. Um, okay, you could get some very, very, very interesting propagation in there at quite high frequencies, too. Now, let's suppose the season changes. And now we go to summer. Well, you're here in North America. This is now Australia. 
and the season changes the other way okay this is North America this is South America okay and depending on the direction of this of course it goes around the world too um, you can get from North America at certain times of the year gray line over to Japan or areas like that I mean there's a lot of this sort of stuff going on so the magic for ham radio operators with the gray line is that it's the transition point between night and day and funny things happen during the transition now if you're like I am the morning gray line lies in the mist of deep sleep and so only the evening gray line is the one that I look at well that's kind of dumb because the person that I'm going to talk to in the gray line probably would need to be a morning person well people around the world tend to be a little bit more evening than morning oriented so you might actually try getting up before dawn and looking for gray line it's going to be on the upper frequencies 20 meters and up you get some amazing openings 10 meters 6 meters on the gray line now it doesn't last a long time because you know as the earth is turning both you and the other person are going in and out of the gray line and for some person the gray line might be getting just about to the end for you it might be just about starting so there could only be a few minutes in there that you could get this phenomenal um, uh, propagation in here so to summarize the gray line is the transition period between night and day okay and if you um, take the time to get up and play a DX uh, in here you can get some phenomenal contacts on uh, the gray line obviously this is not the only way to do it uh, during the day if you're located here you can get the F layer and so on and go very long distances actually even ending up somewhere around the world at night uh, with a low hop or something lots of interesting things going on with the propagation of the earth now the uh, ionization of these outer layers depends on largely the ultraviolet light from the sun and the ultraviolet light tends to be higher when there are sunspots and we are going into a period of higher sunspots right now so fun fun absolutely fun now if you've watched this far into this channel I'd like to ask you to subscribe because if you subscribe you're giving your vote of confidence to YouTube that this channel is one that they should share and I'd really like it if you would do that also if you would like to support this channel financially you can go to decastlercom slash support for a list of ways that you can support so there you have it until we next meet 73